Note that we'd get a different answer if we assume that the randomization was done in a different way. I'm going to erase this here and do it again in a different way. It turns out that in this HLAB study, we did not actually draw names out of a hat to decide who was in the HLAB offer group and who was in the no HLAB offer group. What we actually did was we flipped a coin for each person to determine whether they were in the HLAB offer group or the no HLAB offer group. And the reason we did it that way is that people were coming in one by one, so we couldn't wait to get all the names and put them in a hat and then draw some. We had to be able to tell each person whether they were being offered help or not. This is called Bernoulli randomization, and we briefly talked about it on a previous lesson. So still, what we observed here is A, B, B. But now if we try to write down the different ways these three people could have been allocated to group A or group B, there's going to be more possibilities, right? It could have been A, B, A. If I'm flipping a coin for each person, now I could have two people in group A, right? That's possible. I could have A, A, B. I could have A, A, A. Everyone could be assigned to group A, right? And then I, similarly, everybody could be assigned to group B. Could be BBA, BAB, or BAA. And those are all the possibilities. There's two to the three possibilities, which is eight here, because there's two choices for each of three people. Okay? So we can go through the same process of saying assume which group you're in has nothing to do with whether you won or not. Let's compare the difference in means that we actually observed to the difference in means that we would have observed under each of these different equally likely ways to allocate some people to group A and some people to group B. So here we've got 0 minus 0.5 is 0.5. Here we've got the mean of these two is 0.5 minus 0. This is positive 0.5. Here we've got the mean of 0 and 0 is 0 minus 1 negative one. This one's hard. I can't take a difference in means if everybody's in the same group. Typically what we do is pretend that one wasn't possible. Okay. Is that great? It's a problem with Bernoulli randomization. Similarly, let's pretend this one is not possible. Okay. Here we've got one minus the mean of zero and zero is one. We've got zero minus the mean of zero and one is negative 0.5. And we've got the mean of 0 and 1, which is 0.5, minus 0, which is positive 0.5. Pretending, because we have to, that these two random allocations were not actually possible, here's the list of test statistics that we'd expect to see. And so if we make our reference distribution for the difference in means, what we see is that there's one way for it to be negative 1, one way for it to be positive 1. And we've got over here two ways for negative 0.5, two ways for positive 0.5. There are more possibilities now, right? What did we actually see? We actually saw negative 0.5. The probability that we'd see a difference in means at least as negative as we actually saw is 1, 2, 3 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is a half. Do I find that surprising? No. Right? Given that there's no relationship between group and whether you win or not, half the time I'd see data at least as extreme as I actually saw. I don't find this surprising at all. 